Hey guys, welcome and ting and ting and ting. And today we're going to be watching about some Irish Christmas traditions and ting, you know what I mean? I'm pretty excited as well. I want to see how it stacks up with Christmas uh, uh, on my island or Christmas that I've experienced here in America. Okay, now before we go into that, let me thank the people who have uh, sent me uh, super thanks in there. Super thanks is a way to donate to the creators. It's on YouTube there. Uh, down uh, by the this, uh, above the description, you just go in there and, and click and, you know, donate to the creator. Let me thank those who have done so already. You know, thank you very much for that. Also, for those who have donated to my uh, Buy Me A Coffee link, uh, thank you for that also you know all proceeds will go to get back into this channel you know what i mean for if i need a new mic or something to that effect that's what that money is going to be going for so thank you once again you know what i mean for contributing here you know that helps me keep this uh this vibe going here you know so we all could enjoy uh watching about our culture or history and you know just our everyday life you know like economics and stuff like that because i react to a myriad of stuff and of things in here and uh we could learn about each other because if we learn about each other and we understand each other we probably wouldn't be at odds so much and you know that's the premise of this whole channel so thank you again for those uh that uh, donated and thing like that okay now let's get into this video here and see what kind of irish traditions let's see how it's not stacks up but what is the similarities or difference? It's probably going to be some similarities with my uh, culture, being from the Caribbean. And uh, there may be some stark differences. I've lived in America the last, what, 30, 40 years. So let's go ahead and YouTube and sim sim and check out these traditions. Hi, welcome to my channel. It's Christmas and I'm getting so excited starting the season and getting into the Christmas spirit. I thought I'd share with you some Christmas traditions we have here in Ireland that might not be very familiar outside of Ireland. A lot of it is the usual, you know, in a lot of countries. Santa comes Christmas Eve, open presents Christmas morning, Christmas lunch, Christmas trees, ugly jumpers, all that kind of usual stuff. But I'm going to go through some things that might not be as familiar. Um, some of them you might know, some of them you might not, um, but let's get started. Let's get started. The first tradition I'll talk about is the Christmas Day swim. On Christmas Day, people all over Ireland go for a swim in the sea. It's usually in the morning time, but uh, times vary depending on location. Where I am, it's midday. And hundreds of people go to the beach to watch the Christmas Day swim, and it is so much fun. And you run into old neighbors, old friends, family. It's just such a good vibe down on the beach. And the people that go swimming... I say swimming, but it's so cold that it's more a case of like run in the water, jump in and run back out as fast as you can, usually screaming because it's so cold. But um, it's just such a great atmosphere down there. I haven't taken part yet, but my brother has, my husband has, my brother-in-law has. Um, but it's just fun. It's fun to just watch. But I usually make excuses because it's so cold. But um, maybe this year I'll try it. I don't know. But it's just so much fun to go down and watch the Christmas Day swim is a big one. The next. Hey, check this out. Similarity do kind of different because of climate. <laughs> we do Christmas Day swims too. Now, how does it happen? Okay. I, 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 I lived uh, hop, skip, and a jump away from the beach. And one of the things when we were really small, what our parents would do is like we'd pack a, you know, or Christmas Day lunch and take it to the beach. Sit there and eat, oh my God, stewed chicken, uh, uh, macaroni and cheese, or macaroni, no, not macaroni and cheese, macaroni pie. Yeah, macaroni pie. All, uh, you know, vegetables like callaloo and stuff, and I know you all don't know what callaloo is, but it's kind of like spinach. Oh, so good with pepper and stuff in it, you know? And, you know, and of course we have our, well, let me tell you, there's a cake that people in the Caribbean make. Some people call it black cake. Some people call it rum cake. I grew up knowing it as fruit cake. I know Jamaicans call it black cake and Trinidad, they call it black cake there too. Where I'm from is fruit cake. And how you make it is you soak the fruit in wine, whiskey, you know, uh, sherry. You know what I mean? Like sometimes a week before, some people do it longer. And that's how you make it, and you know, and, and some people do it with rum, just pure sugarcane rum too. You know what I mean? And you make that. Oh my God, that is so good! And even though you bake it, you can still taste the rummy taste to it. Oh, so good, dude. 
Uh, I know I could buy it here, but, but check it out. I know how to make it. But if I was to buy it here in America, 62 US dollars to have it uh, to, to buy it. And that's not including shipping. Is it? They got to ship it from New York to me. I found this a place, you know, uh, on Facebook. That's a Grenadian place that they ship the black cake to. I'm going to have to check that out to see what the vibe is. And the funny part about it is that I'm calling it fruit cake. When I first came to America, and uh, I told my ex-wife about the fruit cake we make. She's like, oh my God, we don't need fruit cake. Uh, apparently, the fruit cake that they have in America is like a hard, teeth-breaking fruit cake. You know, and she never really understood what I was talking about until we, we spent one Christmas in New York with my mom. And she had fruit cake. I loved it. You understand what I'm saying? If you live anywhere close to any Caribbean person where you are, in Ireland or England, wherever you are, check out that fruit cake, man. That fruit cake is the bomb, I tell you. Beach day, we have it too. We spend the day on the beach. And let me tell you something about on the beach. I'm not babbling here, but the cars thing. You know. Anyway, you go on the beach. When we get older and, you know, your mom don't uh, cook up the food and go on the beach and stuff, usually we have lunch at the house, Christmas lunch. But then you go on the beach, right? And there's still families there, you know, with food and stuff. And you could go from family to family and get you a piece of food and take if you know them. Sometimes you don't know them. And of course, you get a drink and we have a drink called Puncha Cream. You know, we have ginger beer. We have sorrel. Uh, what else we got? You know what I mean? All kinds of drinks, rum and coke and thing. And you could just partake, you know what I mean? Pull up your belly and thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. That's Christmas right there. You're outside. The sun is shining. You're on the beach. You know what I mean? Music playing. People singing. You know, laughter. That's the Christmas I'm used to. The Christmas here is like you're indoors. It's freezing. You know what I mean? I never got used to that. Let's get going. Here. This tradition is the 12 pubs of Christmas. And this is basically you go on a night out with your friends and you go in a big group and you choose 12 pubs that you're going to go to. And you have to have a pint or a drink in every single pub. And it's usually a miracle if everyone that starts in the one pub ends up in the 12th pub because it can get really messy because obviously 12 pints is a lot to drink. Oh, yeah. Uh -uh. And there's usually either Christmas jumpers, you always dress up, it's either Christmas jumpers or some kind of themed outfits and you can always spot, if you're in tent, you can always spot a group that's doing the 12 pubs at Christmas because usually the way they're dressed and... The rowdiness, <laughs> yeah. I remember one time I did um, 12 pubs at Christmas with my friends and then my boyfriend at the time did 12 pubs with his friends and we arranged to meet in the 12th pub together and I got to the 12th pub and he wasn't there and I was trying to call him and he wasn't answering his phone and um, so I was waiting around for him and it turned out he was arrested. He was in jail for public intoxication. <laughs> so it always, it's always a messy night. It's a crazy night, but it is so much fun. 12 pubs. The next tradition is Nulig Naman. And this means Women's Little Christmas. And this is every year on January 6th. The Christmas season is officially over. Everything's wrapped up and it's finished. So the women get a day off. So um, usually the men take on the household chores and the parenting responsibilities and the women get to go out and meet their friends and have some drinks and food and um, just a day off. It's not that popular nowadays. A lot of people kind of don't do this tradition anymore. Okay. I think it's still very popular in rural parts of Ireland and little villages and things. But, That's interesting. Um, where I am anyway, people don't really observe it, but it's definitely a very old Irish tradition that okay. um, has been going on for a lot of years. Okay. The next tradition is the Late Late Toy Show. Everyone in Ireland knows about the Late Late Toy Show and looks forward to it. It's a live TV special where the host goes through all of the popular toys for the Christmas season and they play with them and they bring kids on the show and um, it's just become... For a lot of people, it's like the official start of Christmas. And you can get Late Late Toy Show pajamas, you can get Late Late Toy Show mugs, um, sweet shops do, you know, treat boxes. It's such a huge deal. And I think it's on in late November, and it starts quite late, like, um, reason it's called the Late Late Toy Show. I think it starts at like half 9 p.m. or something. So that's pretty late for kids to get to stay up, but they always get to stay up late to watch the toy show. And, um, there's singing and dancing and performances and because it's a live show something always goes wrong but um it's such a good tradition everyone loves the late late toy show no here's a tradition we had as kids 
It's called window shopping. <laughs> I know that's kind of strange, but uh, what it was uh, is that you, you're going to the city and all the stores will have the big displays up and things like that. And uh, you just go through and look at the windows. And of course, your parents are looking at stuff they want to buy for Christmas because one of the tradi traditions in Christmas back home is to redecorate the house, repaint the house, new curtains, new uh, 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 cushion covers, you know what I mean? You varnish all your mahogany stuff, you know what I mean? You paint the house in different colors and things. So, you know what I mean? So, while we out there going, ooh, ah, all the decorations, we, you know, and even the, the hardware stores had some cool decorations and things, you know what I mean? And I don't know if you guys have that or had that in Ireland. Bata Shoe Store. I think it's a British company. No, no. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's B-A-T-E. -E. It's not even there anymore. It was there when I left the island. I highly doubt it's still there. But Bata Shoe Store always had a nice little setup, you know, with the shoes and things, you know what I mean? Wow, this stuff is taking me back, y'all. It's taking me back. Let's keep going. The next tradition is the Christmas panto. A panto is um, like a pantomime. It's like a play. Um, it's like you go to the theater, but it's usually soap stars or people that were on Big Brother type actors and um, full of stupid jokes. And they want the kids in the audience to shout things at them. And um, so it's that kind of show, kind of like a silly show. Um, I haven't been since I was a kid, so a lot of years, but now that I have kids, I'm going this year for the first time in so long, and um, we're going to go see Cinderella. I think it's going to be a laugh, and that's all it is. It's just a laugh, but um, people are very, you know, they go to the Panto every single Christmas. It's part of their tradition, and it is a huge part of Irish Christmas. Okay. Loves that sounds the interesting. <laughs> the next tradition is Christmas crackers. So Christmas crackers are... Um, kind of tubes of cardboard wrapped in paper with a little prize inside and you get them at the dining table for your Christmas meal. Everyone pulls them together and um, when it's pulled in half whoever has the biggest half of the cracker gets the prize inside and the prizes are usually horrible things like plastic whistles or um, what are those spinny thing I don't know but they also come with um, little paper crowns in different colors and everyone has to wear their crown for the meal and um, they also have like jokes and riddles and things and they're usually the worst jokes but it's, it's a fun way to kind of get you know everyone at the table and um, you know guessing the answer I remember one time you're we gonna go spend Christmas in Italy and uh, they don't have Christmas crackers in Italy so we were um, bringing them over in our suitcase but we weren't allowed because they're technically classed as fireworks because when you pull them, they do like a snapping bang sound and whatever it is that makes that banging sound is um, flammable. So you can't bring them on airplanes. But um, So we did miss them that year. But you can get luxury Christmas crackers as well. You can get ones that have like proper nice jewelry in them, designer crackers, um, alcohol, uh, yeah like designer crackers but um i think most people just kind of go for the typical cheap tacky ones <laughs> the i'm gonna tell you something i'm having a memory here the crown she's talking about i vaguely remember something similar to that and i think we had something like that it wasn't like a tradition or anything but I seem to remember that. And we wore those little crowns. But ours were like really colorful. Oh, wow. That's something I haven't thought of in years, dude. And I can't remember what we done, what, what is up with that. And I can't remember whether or not it's around Christmas time either. I think it was. And I think we had that whole thing that we are pulled too. Maybe we just had it once or twice. Wow. I'm going to have to ask my brother about that because I remember something like that. Let's keep going. The next tradition is Christmas FM. For me, Christmas FM means the official start of Christmas. I absolutely 
love Christmas FM. It's a radio station that just streams Christmas music constantly, all day, all night, um, from, I think, late November until after Christmas. And um, in Ireland, you can tune down on the radio, but you can listen to it online anywhere in the world. And I absolutely love Christmas FM. It is tuned into my car. Whenever I get in my car, I only listen to Christmas FM. Um, and it's really good because it raises money for charities. So you can text in donations. So it's, it's for a good cause. I, I absolutely love Christmas FM. The next tradition is boxes of roses, which are basically just boxes of chocolates. But these specific boxes of roses, you can only get them at Christmas time. And people start stocking up well in advance because you have to have your boxes of roses at Christmas. And usually they get pulled out when you're um, watching a Christmas movie in your Christmas pajamas. Everyone's sharing the roses. Um, some people save it till Christmas Day. Some people have it earlier, get a few boxes. But every household in Ireland has a box of roses for Christmas. Except there is a debate about boxes of roses or boxes of quality street and it can get very heated people are very passionate about whether they're <laughs> a roses person or a quality street person i'm a roses person so that's why i'm talking about roses more but um i know some people are all about quality street but so i'll say every household has either roses or quality street i'm also going to include tins of biscuits in this one oh, because yeah. every household in ireland also gets a tin of biscuits well, yeah. biscuits are cookies and um, they're usually put away for visitors, but um, when you do pull them out, they come in layers. And the tradition is you're not allowed to start another layer of the biscuits until the top layer is done. So, um, yeah, that's that's a big one. And I think that's tradition in every single household in Ireland. Everyone has their boxes of roses or quality street and their tin of biscuits. The next tradition... Oh, definitely tin of biscuits. I remember those. I remember those tins of biscuits, boy, and being so anticipatory of digging into those things. We didn't have no tradition about eating the top layer or nothing like that. We just we just jump into them biscuits. You understand what I'm saying? Dig, oh, God, man, this is some stuff I haven't thought of in years, y'all. Wow. Tradition is midnight mass. So obviously, Ireland is a Christian country, but. People don't really go to Mass, um, well, I say people, I mean some people. Some people go to Mass every single Sunday, but a lot of people only go to Mass on Christmas, Christmas Day or Christmas Eve. And um, so it's always packed, and when you go there, you always run into people that you haven't seen in ages. And so it's a big social gathering, and um, Midnight Mass is the most popular, although it's supposed to be at midnight. And the reason it's supposed to be at midnight is because um, that started in like the 5th century when they believed Jesus was born at midnight, so they always wanted to have their Mass at midnight. But um, over the years, it's just been getting earlier and earlier and earlier. So where I am, our, our midnight Mass is at 9 p.m., but it's still called midnight Mass, so whatever works. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we did midnight Mass too. I went to midnight Mass with Mom all the time uh, at the, the old Catholic church there. Y'all have some very succinct Christmas traditions there that seems like the whole place in unison or uniform uh, participate. And of course, too, there could be different ones according to the different regions. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Traditions we have, we have something called Parang, but that's done on Christmas Day. And... Uh, what it is, it's like guys with ukuleles and stuff, and, and parang is a type of music. It's kind of like a mixture of calypso and Hispanic music. You understand what I'm saying, thing? And the idea of that whole thing is, on Christmas morning, the parangers would go from house to house and try to eat the house clean. <laughs> so... So, if you know people going to be paranging in the village, boy, you better put up your Christmas dinner. So they don't eat your Christmas dinner too and you don't have food for later because they come in and they want to eat, drink and be merry. Eat, drink and be merry. That, that's what they want to do and thing. And uh, I mean, the music is like real lively too, you know, like uh, parang, 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 parang. And it's just, it's just like really upbeat music, which is another difference for when I, when I, when I came to America. The uh, Christmas carols were like all ah, you. but it's all sad type stuff, you know. But Christmas, and we have that kind of Christmas carols there too, you know. That, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. We have that too, 
But we also have our own type of Christmas music, you know, Paran music and Christmas soca music or calypso music. And it's all tink, 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 you know what I mean? It's all lively up and tink. I could never get used to this. Uh, and I, I'm a buddy, he's from Virginia, Scott is his name. And he told me that a lot of the Christmas carols we hear now, the modern Christmas carols we hear now, was written during the Second World War. So then that's why a lot of it is so, you know, like, ah, I'll be home for Christmas, all that kind of sad stuff and all of that. You know what I mean? But a uniform Christmas uh, tradition on the island that everybody does, we the, the normal, the Christmas tree. We didn't have Santa Claus. I don't really, I mean, we, we we saw the stories about Santa Claus. I never really thought about it much, really. Because uh, around Christmas time, basically what you do is you bought a present. In on my case, and my siblings' case, we bought a present for our mother. That's it. That's the only person that really got Christmas. There wasn't a whole lot of toys or nothing like that, you know. It could be a combination of not being a tradition or of not just having the money to do all that spending. So I wasn't really with all that spending. So thus, when I came to America and I see all this spending for Christmas, I'm like, what? What's all this spending? Let me let me tell you a story. Let me tell you. My uh my wife's niece, I asked her where she's going for Christmas and she proceeded to tell me everything she's getting. Which at the time, because I was new in America, I was kinda confused, you know, why is she telling me she's getting all this stuff? I don't understand. And uh, my ex-wife had to explain to me, she's telling me all the toys she's getting and all the, you know, the haul she's going to get for Christmas. And I was like, oh, she's talking about what she's getting. I was talking about where she's going because at the time I didn't understand that, hey, you always go to the family's house. It's like a family reunion every Christmas. We did like a family reunion stuff, too, but then we always end up on the beach party, you know what I'm saying? Let's keep going with this here. The next tradition is a new one, but a hugely popular one, and that is Christmas Eve busking on Grafton Street. So on Christmas Eve, musicians will come out with their instruments, their guitars, and they'll sing songs and raise money for um, a homeless charity. And it was started by Glenn Hansard from The Frames. Uh, a lot of people would know him from the movie Once. And um, it always has like really well-known Irish artists come out. So Bono has done it, The Edge has done it, Sinead O'Connor has done it, The Script, Mundy, every, you never know who's going to be there, but it's usually big Irish artists come out and um, everyone's singing and it's just such a good vibe. It's a great Christmas Eve tradition and for such a good cause. So that's it. They are my top Irish Christmas traditions. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Okay. I enjoyed that. I totally enjoyed it. I heard some things that I didn't know that was strictly for the Irish, but I also heard things that made me go, huh, wait a minute, no, we cannot do that at home and thing. Now, do you guys have Boxing Day too? Because we have Boxing Day. Tell me down in the comment section. And this was quite informative there, you know what I mean? Tell me other traditions that uh, you all have in Ireland that wasn't mentioned here, because I know it's different. There's different places that do different things you understand what i'm gonna say and thing and i'll leave a link to this uh, this video in the description i'll also leave links up here to other videos that i've watched concerning ireland or reacted to concerning ireland and uh you know take care now listen man try to have a good holiday season people are always going on about the war on christmas the war on this a war on that let's ignore them and just enjoy christmas you understand what i mean that's what i'm gonna do you do it too. Enjoy your season. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all take care of each other, alright? Cool, right?